We have used um, solution concentrations before. We're going to learn some new ones here. First, we'll talk about qualitative descriptions. So dilute versus concentrated. And this means exactly what you think it means. If you go to the grocery store and you want to buy frozen orange juice, right? You can buy frozen concentrate, right? They, they took a lot of the water out of it. And you can take that concentrated solution and you can dilute it by adding more water and get the regular kind of orange juice. So dilute means there's small quantities of solute compared to the amount of solvent. And concentrated means there's large quantities. Just relative terms, right? And then there's a whole bunch of quantitative terms. And this isn't even all of them. So this table uh, might be a useful reference as you are trying to do some of the homework problems. So molarity. We talked about molarity back in section 5.2. Amount of solute in moles divided by volume of solution in liters. It's an illustration of how you would make a one molar solution of sodium chloride. Here's a new piece of information. Um, molarity will decrease slightly with temperature. So the molarity depends on the temperature because the volume of the solution depends on the temperature. The density of water decreases a little bit as you heat it up. And so if the solution is getting larger and it's got the same number of moles, the molarity is going to go down. Most of the time it's not a problem, but sometimes it is. So when we need a concentration that is not dependent on temperature, we use molality. Molality and molarity are very similar words. So if you see molality on a test, sometimes I've had students think, but I thought it was a typo. Yeah, I don't make typos like that. That's a serious typo, right? Um, molality is different than molarity, and yet it's similar as well. So we're still talking about amount of solute in moles. But now, instead of looking at the whole volume of the solution, we're looking at the mass of the solvent measured in kilograms. So most aqueous solutions are by far, there's way more water than the solute, right? So here we're looking at the mass of the water and where molarity was um, moles per liter of water, or liter of solution, which is mostly water, a liter is 1,000 milliliters. A milliliter is one gram, roughly, for water. So a kilogram is the mass of one liter of water. So molarity and molality, the numbers are going to be real similar. But the, the useful thing about molality is it doesn't depend on temperature because the mass of the solvent doesn't depend on temperature. So this one is abbreviated with a, a italicized lowercase m. And really, we've got so many m's, right? So thankfully, we don't use molality very much. Um, but especially with handwriting, that lowercase m can easily be confused for meter, right? So you kind of have to think about the context. And then we have parts by. You know, parts by mass or parts by volume. And here we're looking at, this is basically the part over the whole. The part you're interested in divided by whole thing times a factor. So parts by mass, mass of solute divided by the mass of the whole solution. Um, if we want percent, then we're multiplying by 100 because percent literally means per 100, right? So the multiplication factor is 100. 14% by mass means 14, pick a mass unit, uh, grams of solute per 100, pick the same mass unit grams of solution. You could do this with pounds. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could You could do kilograms. Um, as long as those um, these two units are the same, they'll cancel out. 
Then we also have parts per million and parts per billion. And these are useful when the concentrations um, are such that a percent gives you a really tiny number. Because, you know, you'll see these on like the, the water report. Um, the city sends out a, a water quality report every year. Um, and they'll list all these different things they test for and they'll tell you what, what the concentration of these is in the city water. And most of those things are in parts per million or parts per billion. So, you know, you say, well, it's 15 parts per billion instead of saying, well, it's point zero 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 one five percent You know, that, that's not so, so easy to look at. We have different units because we're looking at numbers of different sizes, right? So the mass of, oops, double oops, okay, here we go, parts per million, again, part over the whole, mass of solute divided by the mass of the solution, we're going to multiply by a million, parts per billion, multiply by a billion, okay, so if we have 15 parts per billion, like percent was 15 grams per 100 grams, 15 parts per billion is 15 grams per billion grams. You can also look at parts by volume. Here you're looking at the volume of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. Same thing with the multiplication factors, a hundred, a million, or a billion. And there's also one that um, comes up occasionally. It's a mass volume percent, where you're looking at the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. Okay, so here's a problem using parts by mass. What mass of sucrose in grams is contained in 355 milliliters, 12 ounces, of a soft drink that is 11.5% sucrose by mass. Assume a density of 1.04 grams per milliliter. Always read the thing through, read all the words, and then go back and look at the numbers. So we got a bunch <coughs> of numbers here. And then identify what are we trying to find? We're trying to find mass of sucrose in grams. So let's write these things down. We have 355 milliliters of what? So when we've got a solution, we've got the solute and then we've got the whole solution. There's also the solvent. So here we're talking about a soft drink that has sugar in it. So this 355 milliliters of the soft drink, that's of the whole solution, right? So I'm gonna call it soda because that's fewer letters than soft drink, which sounds dumb. Um, what about this 12 ounces? Are we going to need that? Probably not, right? This is one of those English units that we don't like to use in chemistry. I think the reason that that is there is because most of us don't really have an idea of how much is 355 milliliters. Oh, could you take a bath in that? I don't know. Would it quench your thirst? I don't know. What size is that? It's the size of a 12 ounce can of soda. You know what size 12 ounces is, right? You can picture it. You could almost measure it with your hand, right? So that's there just to give you some context. So we don't actually need that one. So I'm going to unhighlight it. And then we've got 11.5% sucrose by mass. So let's interpret that. What does 11.5% mean? It's 11.5 over 100, right? 11.5, this is mass, 11.5 grams out of 100 grams of solution. So the solution is the soda, and it, um, the solute here is sucrose, which is table sugar. And then we've got a density, 1.04 grams per milliliter. 
What's that the density of? The solution, right? It's the density of the soda. So uh, 1.04 grams of soda is going to have a volume of one milliliter. It's, it's helpful to label these um, because you know, here we've got grams of sucrose and grams of soda, and we don't want to get them mixed up. So I took the numbers out and I kind of spread them out a little bit and made sense of them. This, a lot of these problems do end up being dimensional analysis. And so then this is what we're trying to find, but we have to figure out, well, which of these do I start with? Well, this looks like a conversion factor, and so does that. This one cannot be a conversion factor because it's just a volume. So that's the guy we're going to start with. So starting with milliliters of soda, we are trying to get to grams of sucrose. And then the trick is, how do we get there? We're probably going to need to use the two conversion factors that we're given. So this one has grams of sucrose in it. That relates grams of sucrose to grams of soda. So if I had grams of soda, I could convert that into grams of sucrose. If you're still on the fence about dimensional analysis, still not quite getting it, it's not too late for, to benefit from understanding it. Okay, So hit me up. It really is a beautiful thing once you see how it works. How do we get from milliliters of soda to grams of soda? The density. Here we have grams of soda and milliliters of soda. That's the hard part. So I have my path. Milliliters of soda to grams of soda to grams of sucrose. So I'm going to write those down. 355 milliliters of soda. Each arrow represents a conversion. So. First, I'm going to grams of soda, and next, I'm going to grams of sucrose. And then I need my units to cancel out. I need milliliters of soda to go away, so that's what goes in the denominator here. So I can cancel those units out. And grams of soda goes down here, so those will cancel out. And this leaves me with the unit of grams of sucrose, which is what I'm trying to find. All the units go in first, and then they tell you where to put the numbers. There's no remembering, oh, when was I supposed to divide by this or multiply this? The units are going to tell me what to do. So here I have the relationship between grams of soda and milliliters of soda. That's this guy. This has the same units, right? The number is with grams of soda. So here, the number goes with grams of soda. If it bothers you that there isn't a number down there, it would be one. Grams of sucrose and grams of soda. Well, that's this guy right here. It was 11.5 grams of sucrose. So 11.5 grams of sucrose per 100 grams of soda. So 355 times 1.05 times 11.5 divided by 100. And we should have three sig figs. So 42.5 grams of sucrose. Is that a lot of sugar? Yeah. Remember when we did the, um, the lab where we made the, the salt solutions and did the densities, and you weighed out 15 grams of salt? And that, was, that seemed like a lot of salt, didn't it? This is a lot more than that in one can of soda. Hmm. Any questions? Doing a calculation with parts, parts by mass. Um, so this is parts per billion. Um, 
I'm going to skip this one. Uh, mole fraction and mole percent. Uh, we looked at mole fraction when we were talking about um, partial pressures of gases. So here, uh, mole fraction is the moles of the thing we're interested in, the moles of the solute, divided by the total amount of moles. Well, so what is that? That's the moles of the solute plus the moles of solvent. So moles of solute divided by the total of solute plus solvent. And then if we want the mole percent, we take the mole fraction and multiply by 100. Okay, so this is a fun one. I'm going to sit down. Solution is prepared by dissolving 50.4 grams of sucrose in 0.332 kilograms of water. The final volume of the solution is 355 milliliters. Calculate the concentration of the solution in each unit. Hmm. I've done this one so many times, and I just did it last night, and I need to do it again. Just for you guys. So we got some numbers in here. We've got a mass of sucrose. We have a mass of water. And we have a volume of solution. Um, here we are calculating concentrations. If you're calculating a concentration, you're going to use an equation. If you've got the concentration and you're using it to calculate mass of solute or volume of solution or something, then you're doing dimensional analysis. It's like with density. When you're calculating density, use the density equation. For all other density problems, use density as a conversion factor. So this is going to be equations. So let's just um, review quickly. What are the units of molarity? Moles over liter. Moles of solute divided by liters of solution. How about mole fraction? That's moles over moles, right? So that's moles of sucrose. There's just no short way to write that. Divided by moles of sucrose plus moles of the solvent, which is water. I guess we should specify this is moles of sucrose divided by liters of solution. Molality. That's going to be moles of sucrose, but instead of dividing by the volume of solution, kilograms of solvent. So kilograms of H2O. Mole percent. Well, this one, you're just going to take this one and multiply by 100. Uh, percent by mass. The part over the whole times 100. So, and we're talking about mass here. So, grams of solute, grams of sucrose, divided by the whole thing, the grams of solution times 100. Now, for your fourth exam, um, some of these equations are given on the sheet of useful information. OK, so molarity, I need moles of sucrose and volume of solution. Well, they didn't give me moles of sucrose. They gave me a mass of sucrose. But they also gave me the chemical formula. So we can calculate that, right? 50.4 grams times, so 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.008 plus 11 times 16. 
I'm putting that number in the denominator because the grams need to cancel and the mole is what I want left because that's what I'm finding. So 50.4 divided by that is 0 0.147. Four moles of sucrose. Okay, so that's my moles of sucrose. I'll write that in here. What's the volume of solution in liters? Yeah, so this is um, 355 milliliters. So you can convert that in your head, um, unless you do it backwards, and then I say you don't, you can't do it. Um, or you can do it like this, 355, and instead of milli, I'm gonna write what milli means, times 10 to the minus three liters. So take the number of moles and I divide by 355 times 10 to the negative three. And I'm gonna round this to three significant figures just to save time. And this is units of moles per liter. It can also be expressed as 0.415, that's not five. Capital A. Should be pretty straightforward, we, we've done those before. Mole fraction, this is always tedious. But we have the moles of, of sucrose, right? So at least we don't have to do everything from scratch. So moles of sucrose, 0.14724 moles, divided by moles of sucrose plus moles of water. How do we figure out the moles of water? Well, we have the mass, right? So, um, I know the molar mass of water, but in grams per mole. So this is 0.332. Kilo represents times 10 to the positive three. Times 10 to the positive three grams. And I want moles on the top and grams on the bottom. And I happen to remember, because I do it so often, that water is 18.02. If you calculate it, hopefully you'll get the same thing. So this is 18.424 moles of water. So that goes in here, 18.424 moles. So be careful when you're dividing by a sum, okay? So use the parentheses. So I've got point, one, four, seven, two, four divided by and then I'm going to use the parentheses in my calculator so I don't have to think as much. Divided by open parentheses 0 0.14724 plus 18.424. Close the parentheses, press equals. And this is giving me 0 0.0079. Um, and I have three sig figs. 793. The units cancel out, mole fraction doesn't have any units. Is that a reasonable mole fraction? Seems kind of small, but is it possible? Sure it is. So mole fraction is always gonna be between zero and one because if it was pure sucrose, then it would be a mole fraction of one, right? And if it was pure water, it'd be a mole fraction of zero. There's gotta be somewhere in between. So since we just got that one, let's skip ahead to here to the mole percent. 
So here we're going to just take the mole fraction that we just calculated, 0 0.00793, and we're going to multiply by 100 and get 0.793%. Okay, molality. Moles of sucrose, well, we've got that number. So I'm going to put that in here, 0 0.14724 moles divided by kilograms of solvent, kilograms of water. Oh, that's why they gave us this, right, in kilograms. They were actually kind of being nice. So 0 0.147, oops, 24 divided by 0.332. 0.443 um, moles per kilogram or 0.443 lowercase italicized m molal. So the molarity and the molality are pretty close to each other, right? They're both 0.4 something. Not exactly the same, but in the same ballpark. So we already did D, so now we need to do mass percent. So grams of sucrose, okay, well they gave us that. 50.4 grams of sucrose. Wait, I don't wanna write that way. Divided by grams of solution. What's the mass of the solution? It's not specifically written out anywhere here. It's the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent, right? So the mass of the solute is that same number that's in the numerator. And what's the mass of the solute? I'm sorry, the solvent is this many kilograms, which is 332 grams. So again, be careful dividing by that thing. Use your parentheses. And that gives me 13.2%. Mm. Any questions? Yay, I got the answers right again. This is one where we practice converting um, percent by mass into molarity. Um, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but just kind of outline what you would do. So 10.5% by mass, right, is 10.5 grams per 100 grams. So grams of, here it's glucose, per 100 grams of solution. To have the molarity, I need moles of sucrose divided by liters of solution. So I think the approach that works best for most students is to say, well, let's, let's take the numerator here. I can convert grams of glucose to moles of glucose, right? So molar mass. So do that conversion, get your number. 100 grams of solution, I need this to be liters of solution. Well, I'm gonna need the density here. I can convert to milliliters, and then I can use my knowledge of metric prefixes to convert to liters. And now I take the first number I calculated and divide by the second number I calculated. And we should get 0 0.6. 